Part five. Sorry it's so long, but it's like an epic movie journey. And I'm every time I think about like the stuff I leave I'm leaving out, I'm like But um I'm also writing about it and I don't like recapping stories. It actually is hard for me to make these videos, but this is what my spirit wants me to do. As soon as it's as soon as I do what spirit wants me to do, I always feel a whole lot better. Like, cause my, my spirit guys be like, tap, 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 tap. Hey, hey, hey. And I'd be like, really? Like people are interested in that. Like people are interested, people, somebody would be interested in me. Like why? Like that's, that is my attitude about life. You want to know why? Because I'm not really all that interested in other people. <laughs> I'm I, I'm like walk through life and I'm just kind of like what's up you know just chilling I don't really be concerned with myself with with what's going on besides what I want out of life you know but anyway we're here I have a hurricane I, I'm getting a hurricane boyfriend he's uh snapchatting with me I don't want a hurricane boyfriend. It's more like he wants a hurricane girlfriend. And he's English. He's black. He seems to be on some of the same shit I'm on. So we chill. Okay. There's no. There's no. There's none of that. Although you would like for that. He tried it. I was. Whatever this is, that was me. All right. So, um, anyway, <clears throat> nightfall, the hurricane starts, and um, you can hear it. <sighs> We're in the stadium downtown San Juan, across the street from um, uh, Las Americanas. For those of you who have lived or are still in or have been to Puerto Rico, okay? Um, you can hear the storm, and um, everybody's up, and the power's still on, and or maybe the generator's on. Um, I fall asleep on my cot, and then I am awoken, awakened, awakened because a piece of the Roof comes off and falls on my cot, and I flip. <laughs> I like jump up and damn it, flip over my cot, you know. And I'm like, oh shit, this shit is this shit's getting real. And so, not too long after that, we get told that we need to move to the second floor underneath the bleachers, huh? Okay. So, I mean, I was already moving my stuff. I moved, got my cot and I moved it over to where my hurricane boyfriend was. Um, and, and plus the floor was wet too because the water was seeping in through the sound system in the middle, that thingy that's in the middle of the stadium. And so, we're, everybody's like kind of like, panicking and running around and they're moving us to the second floor but me and um what's his name um were like is this the safest place and I also noticed that the roof is moving it's like going whoosh, whoosh. I, I can see the roof moving I thought the roof was going to come like flying off like I thought it was going to come flying off that's how it looked and the mayor's there, and she is not telling people that that's really the reason why they we were moving. Like, the, the stadium wasn't in danger of flooding at all, because it was still wet upstairs, too. Like, the condensation on the walls, the ground, it was, like, all wet. Everything's wet. Or starting to get wet. And so... That was a fear. That was scary. And running around that dark, that dark stadium, because upstairs it, there was no light. The wet and dark 
stadium with the hurricane going on um, and not knowing if you can trust the people telling you to move here, go there, you know, like who do you follow your own instinct or do you just do what the police say? Like, what do you do? That's the type of situation you're in, in those types of situations. Like, there's, like, lots of police and stuff around, and they're telling you what to do, and you have to do what they say. Even if it's not, like, the safest thing, because me and, what's his name, Hurricane um, Bay, wanted to stay in a place that we felt maybe was a little bit safer just in case the roof came off (sighs) but for the sake of keeping a peace and plus I didn't feel any different either way like if we would have stayed downstairs and the roof came came in maybe it would have been worse you know So, we went upstairs. We took all our stuff upstairs. And um, we got through it. And the hurricane lasted maybe 29 hours. And um, the parking lot was flooded for a little while because it went down really fast. That was interesting to me. And um, then, after the hurricane, it's life after the hurricane. Life after the hurricane is... um, Less resources, a fear of food and water scarcity, a possibility of no gas, no generator, no electricity. But living in a, in the shelter also meant that we would have those resources more so than people who stayed in their homes and were barricaded in their homes and and trapped um, by floods and uh, trees and wires being down. And um, it meant we survived. That's what it meant. And um, it meant we would survive after the hurricane as well. Hmm. So, I'm not going to go into a t- 20 million details about this part. I really don't feel the need to. But people were upset be- after a few days because there were needs that weren't getting met and the, and the ground was really wet and the conditions we were living in were funky. The generator stopped working for a little bit and the toilets weren't flushing and it was funky, okay? And it was a moldy smell because of the moisture and there were elderly and there were sick people mixed in with people who weren't sick and the elderly weren't being taken care of and the families were protesting about that. So then we end up moving to a community center um, that was not too far away where it was and and plus we couldn't shower I don't know how long we were at the shelter not a week no but I mean it's like Groundhog's Day what are you going to do at a shelter I read I uh, hung out with people you walk around and you see the same things over and over again I made funny faces funny videos I read again you just kind of try to pass the time um, and you stay safe <sighs> because the rumor started just like they did in St. Thomas about people looting and st- and pillaging and stuff and 
People wanted to go home and see their houses, but the mayor told them that if they left, that they wouldn't be able to come back. And she was just saying that to try to keep everybody safe so that people wouldn't go wild and um, into situations that it would take even more extra resources to get them out of. But of course, a lot of people did leave and go home because they really wanted to see what condition their home was in, which is understandable. So in the, um, and as far as me and Hurricane Bay goes, he got on my nerves and that ended like, oh yeah. He started talking to me about hidden colors or something that I watch it. And I was like, I haven't watched the whole thing, but the parts I did watch, I didn't necessarily agree with, or I don't take extreme views like that. I don't just take on extreme views. I was like, have you read the ISIS papers? And he's like, no. Well, I read that and I like that better. That was the end of that because he got offended. And like while he was like getting upset and in the uproar because he was militant and about Malcolm X and Martin Luther King. And um, I told you those number four guys are like karmic relationships for me. And I usually end up fucking with them. And I usually end up <coughs> with a bond and a connection that I regret later. Like, they seem deep, but they don't be that deep. Like, as far as, like, connection and bonding and having a, a real relationship, not really. Not so. <laughs> not I set the duck. So... I interrupted that pattern. And hopefully I won't run into none of their asses no more. And if I do, who's going to check me, boo? I don't know what I'm talking about. What did I just do there? <laughs> but, um, anyway, we went to the community center. I wasn't talking to um Hurricane Bay no more because he got on my nerves. I just kind of like, he snapped at me. And I never looked at him again. So, um, at the community center, there were showers and yay, showers. Ah. But there was no air conditioning. So that was something else for people to complain about. But I found myself um, with another decision. Do I stay or do I go? And, this, and the decision was made for me. The decision was made through me seeing myself, you know, I'm like, I can work with the kids and I can do this and I can do that. But I'm like, this is not my purpose and what I came to do. I figured that whatever I did during this hurricane aftermath is what people are going to know me as. And, and it might be a job offers that I get in the future that's just how I look at things and I know how people are that's how reputations get made and I'm like although that's not a bad reputation that is not who I am and what my calling and what my purpose is I think I'm gonna go on to the next place because they told me they couldn't help me anyway because I'm from St. Thomas what am I doing at this shelter after a couple of weeks resources start getting thinner and thinner so then they start seeing who they can pick out, pick off. Like, who can we help? Who can't we help? Right? So I made a decision after I got into another small spat with one of my girlfriends. She started yelling at me and saying, we're poor. You have to realize that you're poor now. We don't have a house. We don't have anything. And I'm like. I don't speak those things onto my life. And she was like, whatever. This is an altercation that happened because I told her I didn't want to walk with her and the son to the groceries, to the pharmacy or whatever. I thought she had a car when she invited me. But no, we were walking in the middle of the day in Puerto Rico. And I was like, no, ma'am. And I, my body also had started shutting down from eating the processed ham and cheese and white bread sandwiches. Amen. Thank you so much for the food. But I could feel my organs starting to shut down. 
and and spirit brought me some oatmeal and orange juice legit like I, it, i'm like i need oatmeal and orange juice and then somebody brought it brought brought it for me when, when we started being able to leave the shelter and the store started opening up again so thank you thank you spirit for that i felt like myself a little bit more after i ate that and so when i got to the um i'm trying to wrap this up um after i got to st thomas and not st thomas to so the shelter for people from st thomas they wouldn't let me in there either so then I was faced with a, another decision. I had to get driven to the airport. <laughs> and it's about to be a part six.